heels were once worn primarily by male aristocrats to appear taller. Pink hasn't always been a girl colour. In 1918, the infant department store recommended dressing boys in pink. When we talk about feminism, we break down the difference between biology and sociology, focusing more on gender than sex. Feminism as a movement comes in waves. The first wave came with the suffragettes of the late 19th and early 20th century, women who demanded the right to vote. The second wave sought to destroy gender discrimination. In the 1970s and 1980s, orchestras began holding blind auditions, increasing women's chances of reaching the final stages of an audition by 50%. In 1991, American lawyer Anita Hill testified that Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas had sexually harassed her. Becoming Third Wave was written by Rebecca Walker in response to Thomas, subsequently becoming a Supreme Court Justice. In 2018, Christine Blasley Ford and two other women testified against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh with sexual assault charges. He was sworn into court October 6th of that year. Fourth Wave feminism is digital, virtual. It is not dismantling an unfair law, but noting men and women are forced to live up to different standards. A male and female employee swapped emails for a week. Where clients suddenly became rude and condescending towards him, she had a great week. Mansplaining, when a man patronisingly explains something, typically to a woman, is built on bias. It assumes expertise in one party and ignorance in the other. The Me Too movement started out to give women of colour and women from a low socioeconomic background a pathway to healing from sexual violence. Founder Tarana Burke never imagined the group would be so public and widespread, but people clung to the phrase. Feminism is a response to patriarchy, under which women resist oppression and bias, while gender non-conforming people fight for the right to be recognised and respected. Objects are deemed for girls or for men only, allowing companies to make twice the profit margin by selling the same product twice, often with an inflated pink tax added. The term toxic masculinity does not allude to masculinity nor maleness, but a negative extreme of some of the values associated with these. Modern feminism acknowledges the intersections between social categories like race, gender and sexual orientation, understanding that the experiences of different demographics are not the same. Chick flicks provide young women with an avenue to explore uniquely female worries, but it's only recently that they've integrated intersectionality, diversifying their protagonists away from only a privileged white girl's perspective. Feminist cartoonist Alison Bechtel coined the Bechtel test in a 1985 comic strip as a way of highlighting the poor representation of women in film. Although well-developed female characters are a more common occurrence in contemporary media, many modern movies still fail this simple test. Comic books reinforce gender roles in their depiction of the idealised superhero. Where the male characters represent the male power fantasy, female characters follow the male sexual fantasy, rather than the equivalent female power fantasy. Fridging a woman is a comic book trope that dates back to 1999, highlighting how often female characters are killed or irreversibly depowered in comics just to serve as male characters' development. From ancient Greece to Shakespearean England, the depiction of women on stage wasn't undertaken by a woman, but by a man in makeup. Female authors like S. E. Hinton, J. K. Rowling, L. M. Montgomery chose to be published under their initials to be taken seriously. Everyone knows who Amadeus Mozart is, but few remember his sister Anna Maria, also a prodigy, who was forced to give up playing when she reached marrying age. In mythology, it is often implied that women's rise to power would lead to the destruction of society. Ancient Greece has Pandora, whose curiosity released all evils of humanity. Abrahamic religions have Eve, whose temptation in the Garden of Eden instilled humanity with the original sin. In Jewish mythology, Lilith, Adam's first wife, gained a reputation as a demon for fleeing the Garden of Eden after Adam would not acknowledge her as equal. It wasn't until the 1970s that Judith Plaskow reinterpreted the story through a feminist lens. Much of storytelling operates in male as default. We see this in modern iterations like video games, books and television, and in long-standing religious thought. In psychoanalysis, Carl Jung proposed four major archetypes for women – the queen, the mother, the wise woman and the lover. 
The Madonna whore complex divides women into two groups, the chaste and the lascivious. You're a Marilyn or a Jackie, a Betty or a Veronica. This determines women's worth by their sexuality. The not like other girls movement is in part internalized misogyny, but also points to a desire to move away from these limiting categories. Across movies and books, we see women lumped into more modern archetypes. The cool girl, who looks like a supermodel, but has traditionally male tastes. The girl next door, an approachable best friend type. The hooker with a heart of gold, whose sexuality fulfills male desires without compromising her moral purity. The manic pixie dream girl, whose one-dimensional kookiness only serves to help the male protagonist see the wonder of the world. Critiquing these terms doesn't imply there aren't women with these traits, but refers to a lack of dimension in female characters. A feminist is assuredly one thing, a person who believes in equal rights across the genders. The waves of feminism are not like waves of an ocean that crash on the shore and disappear. They are like waves of light, ongoing. Feminism brings with it a legacy, a history of people acting under its banner to get society where it is today, and where it will be tomorrow.